Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot and welcome to my watercolour demo of this time a car park scene and this one I'm only going to use uh, three colours as in a, a previous uh, video so just yellow, blue and red so a good exercise in mixing colours and working with a limited palette so in this watercolour I'll be covering a few watercolour techniques like uh, laying down your initial wash uh, wet in wet, splattering techniques, uh, blending colours because I've only got three of course, um, negative painting as in painting around some figures which I'll introduce and the cars um, and some dry brush strokes as well. I'll also be going through the normal stages I go through in a painting and cover such things as timings. So this is my reference photo a car park in southern Portugal so really an ordinary quite an ordinary scene maybe most people would dismiss this as a subject for a painting but I like uh, the challenge of tackling everyday scenes and trying to make something from them now I've painted a few car parks before um, so they're quite uh, you know they're, they're very similar to doing a harbour scene really, I liken them to, to doing a harbour scene with boats, boats replacing cars and, and especially here with a dark background um, we've got cars in the bright sunlight and some dark shadows underneath them. So those of you who see my previous demos will know that I paint in a loose style or impressionistic and what I want to try and do here is well, first of all, plan my picture, maybe spend five or ten minutes just thinking it through in my head, trying to imagine me actually painting the picture before I've started, um, thinking about the key elements, things that might go wrong, um, just just putting it in that, in that initial planning stage there. Um, then deciding what to leave in, what to leave out. I'm going to... I'm not going to copy this scene exactly, I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm happy to move things around like people and cars to support the composition. Um, this bus stop, for example, it's it's not really doing much for me and it's pointing the wrong way as well, um, pointing away from us and uh, just pointing the wrong, wrong direction. So I might replace that with something else or leave it out. Moving around the street furniture, so these pots of plants for example might dismiss uh, dispense with those as well so just thinking about moving things around to support the, the composition and the balance of the picture um, then think about where is the Sun coming from what angle you know we're going against the light light coming from the left the right um, where will the shadows be what will their length be trying to get all the angles uh, correct where is my focal point. Uh, maybe it's this central car there, the quite dominant car there um, in the uh, in the middle ground there. Um, so perhaps is that. Uh, I'm thinking about where is the darkest area. So the dark area was over on the left hand side um, at the street at the street level uh, just going up the road there that seems to be quite a, a dark area. And sometimes it's a good it's a good idea to have the, the light area fairly close to the dark area. It, uh, that works well in watercolour. So this is a three colour painting then. I'm only going to be using uh, a red which is rose opera, a yellow which is yellow light, could actually be any yellow, and a blue, uh, a scenarius scenario, blue. <laughs> Uh, and sorry, I will be having um, a, a fourth one, uh, cheating a little bit with a neutral tint to darken um, some of those those uh, tones for me. So first step, the initial drawing, and I'm using uh, first of all the paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. It's a rough texture and it's 300 grams in weight. Sorry about the uh, Nike logo there. I am being sponsored by Nike now. <laughs> Only joking. Um, so 
I'm using a, a, a soft pencil 3B and starting on the left hand side I normally always start on the left hand side don't know why um, and then going across um, and, and starting with the uh, uppermost portion of the picture so that's the first left hand building there so I've replaced the car park sorry I've replaced the bus stop sign with a car park sign big P then the street level which will be punctuated with a few parked cars so the main part of the car park is on the right hand side here so this primary car I think will be the focal point so starting from the top of the car put in the windscreen and then draw in the rest of the body of the car and when we've got a, a car part like this we want to have different sizes of cars some in the distance so some right up against the the, the back of that uh, background building half in the shade half in the sun And then let's get some figures in. One or two figures, just lightly drawn, just beginning to think where the shadows will be. But sometimes with shadows, when I'm doing the initial drawing, I might do a bit of cross hatching just to indicate where the, the, the dark shadows will be. Um, just uh, and that will that will show through the initial washes as well so two figures try and make them look a little bit different from each other so legs not in synchronization third figure there um, which maybe we'll have that contrasting against the, the dark background as I said the, the the darkest part of the picture is that um, far left hand building there so let's have something light in front of that as a good contrast maybe some other sign here um, and then the base of the building going over to the right just loosely drawn maybe another vehicle in here so we're trying to think about as we um, move left and right we're trying to think of the perspective as well so we've got a slight um, side view on that right hand car And then, uh, as I sometimes do, just cross hatch people's faces so I, I know which way they're going to be going. Whether they're and and also there's a group of uh, a lot of figures on the painting. Then um, then have them going in different directions. So the first wash. I normally start off with the sky see here you can see I'm mixing predominantly in the top left corner um, a yellow mix trying to get it a bit warm I'm trying to replicate almost a, a yellow ochre I would normally if I had a, a bigger palette here I'd be using yellow ochre so I'm trying to replicate that as best I can with these limited colors so right across I'm using a Raphael mop brush here, um, probably one of the largest ones they do. This is a size six. Right, so that's the horizon, if you like, and then above it, let's put in a blue. There's a slight slope on this painting of about um, 10 degrees, so it's just going to fall down gently. The blue is going to meet with that yellow. 
and so we're now going to be careful not to paint over the P so that that blue is still traveling it may not be too noticeable here but it's still traveling just ever so slightly and blending into the yellow at first yellow so this is just the base coat of um, these background buildings just wanting to go over most of the paper with this initial wash coming down almost to street level there so the top right corner um, is predominantly where I'm going to be mixing my blues cool cool colors if you like so that background building is going to be on the left hand side is going to be the darkest now a bit of careful painting around the figures sometimes when I come to figures I might actually paint right over their head and just leave the uh, main torso main part of the body um, unpainted because uh, with a bit of body paint you can then go over um, their, their faces and, uh, and then with a bit of white adding the highlight for the tops of their heads so it doesn't matter if you go over their heads but um, it's sometimes fresher to leave the white paper if you can um, this is not uh, Saunders do a high white paper um, this isn't it it's more of um, a natural almost slightly creamy color sort of between sort of halfway between white and cream in a way so this is the base of the car the, the, the surface of the car park so we're only going to have one go at this um, and we want to this is southern Portugal it's summer so it's it's hot it's dry dusty lots of chippings and stones around we want to try and give the impression of that type of surface this is where I'll try and do a bit of splattering to give that impression so you'll see here I'm, I'm just mixing in the complete range of different colors I've got and going back into while it's still quite moist going back into um, the previous wash with additional colors make sure I go right up to the edges so this paper is secured with masking tape just ordinary decorators masking tape and uh, see where that slope it is accumulating at the bottom there so I've just dried out the mop brush a bit and gone along the bottom just so that it doesn't go backwards and introduces um, sort of nasty cauliflowers right at the right at the bottom of the picture they're okay I mean cauliflowers are okay in some part some elements of watercolor but not I don't think uh, right down at the at the bottom there right on the very edge so just lift out some of the road here so I've, I've got a sponge over on the right hand side I'm just um, getting all the moisture out of the brush and then going over just giving that indication of the, the road leading from bottom left to top right
add in a bit more blue there. It could have been anything, it could have been a bit of red. Just want to have a very varied, um, because this is quite a large area of the painting, um, you want to, or I need to have some kind of interest here. Likewise, if it was if it was a sky, I mean, if if, uh, if two thirds of my painting was the sky, then I'd have to think about having some interesting clouds or, or something in the sky. So I think we're nearly done on that first wash. Just going to let things dry off completely now. Has to be a hundred percent dry before we go on to the next stage. And these will these these colours will dry a little bit lighter as well. So I do sometimes use a hairdryer to speed up the process. So paper's now still not quite dry and with a medium sized synthetic brush with a bit of clear water. I'm just splattering now some clear water. So this is where timing is, is important here. If you do it when it's too moist then well you just get a um, a slight lightness appearing but uh, with, with it being um, damp if you like you get these little um, lighter areas appearing with with darker boundaries around them, so this could be you know quite nice if it was um, an old wall or um, you know so maybe shadow uh, where you've got different uh, or, or pebbly beach you know where where you want to have these these different um, textures. So I'm just going to make sure everything is completely dry. As I say, it's still a bit damp at the moment before we go on to the next stage with the background buildings. That will be the next step. So you can see things are drying a little bit lighter. That is step number two. Right, back with the large mop brush and we want to make a quite a dark mix here, so predominant, predominantly blue. So sometimes spend more time mixing than actual painting, trying to get things absolutely right. There's not too much paint on the brush, just enough to go over that particular area. But these brushes do hold a lot of paint in them, so I don't need to constantly go back to the water well to pick up more water. And again, like the car park surface, I'm introducing 
different colors as I come down. Now there is a slight sloping roof here on the left hand side that's catching the light so I'm going to try introduce that if I can. Careful to go around the sign and then this large apartment, I think it's an, like an apartment block, it's got um, a few uh, terraced levels up there, balconies, there's the sloping roof, careful around the sign. So we're coming to the base now of this building and I want to get quite dark with my colour. So I'm using the neutral tint, but not too not too neat and I'm mixing it with other colours as well. Right down to the top of this car. Car number one over the top. Be a bit careful going around the people. Nice, nice thing about this brush is that when it's got, when it's not got too much um, paint on it, you get a nice edge, which is really makes it easier to go around different objects like this. So around that first figure, over to figure number two. Also thinking about the car part sign as well. And there's another, there's a second car in the background there. And you'll see also I'm um, as I'm laying down this darker wash, I'm leaving out little little bits here and there, which I don't really think about too much. It just it just sort of happens. And I think sometimes it can be overdone, but uh, sometimes you can. It it just has a bit more interest there, and sometimes you can make something out of them as well. When you when you've let it dry, and you you think um, you know you, you could actually see other things in there, maybe. Uh, the, the top of someone's head so you can make these little marks that I've left into something else that you hadn't thought of first of all. Right, the sign, there's a big sign on top of this right hand building which I think is actually a restaurant. Over to the right is the sea so it's um, overlooking the beach. And the start of the, the actual restaurant proper there. But the, 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 uh, as I say, it's overlooking the sea. And then again, we want to try and get a bit darker as we come down into that base. Um, just forgot that left hand side there. and that smaller sign, paint around that. Now, tops of these cars, it's not one continuous line there, it's, there's a slight little dip down I took. Let's 
sorry about the uh, glare on the picture that's caused by the the angle between the camera which is right above as you as you can see it's right above right in the middle of this picture and it's um, hitting the light coming from my fluorescent uh, tubes. Just going to take a tissue now and lift out while it's still quite moist. Just lift out some of those colours. Not too much. So it could be a, you could use a paper towel or a tissue as long as it doesn't disintegrate on you on the picture. Now, as the background is still wet, I'm going in with the cars here, and you see it's just bleeding, blending uh, on the gaps, which, which uh, is quite sometimes quite a nice thing you can do with watercolor, where things are just blending on their own. So we're connecting these cars together a little bit. Now this lighter wash I'm putting in is not too dry because I want it to stay fairly moist for when I put in the, the darker shadows. And when I put in the darker shadows, it's going to sort of seep up into yeah, not too much, just take off some of that. It's going to seep up into the cars. In the same way, I, I drew the comparison of doing a harbour scene with boats. So if, if this was low tide and we these were boats, then with their darker shadows, um, do everything while it's still moist, then you get some nice blending effects happening. So I'm using a smaller synthetic brush now for the shadows. And you'll see it's just beginning to blend with each other. So it doesn't need to be too precise because we've got a rough surface here so I don't need to be too concerned with any straight lines on the shadows. Maybe slightly less intense with the shadows in the background. join the sign with the building. A little bit of minor bleeding going on there where those supports come down into the building. Now this car park sign, this is where we've got to be a bit careful. So I'm doing this with the smaller brush and I couldn't do this with the larger mop brush and then paint around that P. If you can't do it this way, maybe you could just paint the whole sign blue, blue and then go in with some white paint afterwards. That actually looks a little bit too white, that P. I might need to tone it down a bit make it a bit darker otherwise it's drawing your eye drawing your eye too much to it after all it is a dusty a dusty scene so 
can't be too bright no faces of the figures so I'm making some quick skin color almost half of that yellow half of the rose red start with their faces arms figure number three And uh, as it's summer, maybe they got the shorts on. So don't actually put a lot of effort into doing the legs, which might give a sense of movement as well when uh, you just loosely paint in the legs a very weak wash here just to take off the white shadows just thinking about where I've done the previous shadows trying to get the angles right as well slimmer thinner shadow for the background figures when I've got some of this dark stuff let's bung some on the car park surface just to again Give the impression of little stones and chippings and rubble. Try and make it as random as possible. Hopefully bigger blobs down towards the foreground. Smaller ones further away. bit of dry brush strokes here just creating some extra forms so the maybe the side of the road there going into the going uh, going further away from us between the two buildings um, so I'm just picking up some of the lighter areas as well adding a bit of shadow behind them some of these windscreens I'll put in others I'll leave out where the uh, the sunlight's hitting them So some tail lights now, which is a bit of that red, because the red is a sort of cool red in a way, I had to add a bit of yellow into it just to try and mimic a scarlet. scarlet. Uh, dirty up that P 
car park sign. Pick up a bit more of these shadows of the stones. post for the car park sign. Quite a, a dry mix. Not a continuous line, broken it a little bit and then that smaller sign in the background there. Um, now let's do those shadows. Again trying to think about um, the previous shadows I've done and the lines they're taking. So maybe the sun's in the top right corner here. Then make that smaller sign less obvious. Leave a, a light edge across the top where the sunlight's hitting it. bit of writing on the sign so it doesn't need to be too precise almost just giving the impression of some letters if you try and do it exactly you might without practice you might just either run out of space or it's not too not too central there we are that'll do pick up a few more architectural details what I've got the dark brush here that mast over there sort of almost balances the car park sign little light areas and just putting something dark underneath them. Just try and use an impression of some writing on that smaller sign. Now some more car details. The These uh, bumpers, grills, front grills, building with these balconies to just loosely could have almost have left them out A 
actually putting in a darker background here which is going to make that distant figure a little bit more in contrast. Use my figure just to smudge in the background, just blend it a little bit. Uh, some of these cars, maybe some wheel arches, not too much. We try not to overdo things here. We are, or I am, I am trying to keep it slightly impressionistic. So we're coming to the end, the latter stages of the painting now, and thinking about highlights, trying to emphasize those. So this is where I'm using um, with a small synthetic brush and straight from the tube, some white paint. just here and there, not overdo it. Particularly where, you know, on these um, posts here against the darker background, just where thinking where the sun's coming from, get on that side. This sign needs to be made a little bit darker again. I think that's a little bit better. It was too bright. Well, I've got it as well, just uh, blend those colors as well, just to connect a few more shadows to those figures. So here is the finished painting, which I've just cropped a little bit just to fit it into a widescreen orientation. Um, so just to summarize, car park scene, ordinary car park scene, um, but trying to think about the things I want to leave in, things I want to take out, not going to copy that scene exactly. So, so things like um, signs and street furniture, lamp posts, they can be moved around pointing, pointing in a different direction for you. Introducing figures as well, which helps us with the scale and adds a bit more interest. Think about where is my focal point? Where, where will I have the light areas, the dark areas? And have them up against each other like that distant figure and the dark background. Um, hopefully that works quite well. Uh, thinking about where the sun was coming from as well. Uh, so generally speaking with, I think with watercolors, sun, it, it looks good when you're painting 
into the sun or the sun's coming from the left or the right. So I hope you like the painting. Uh, please see more of my paintings up on my website which is www.timwilmot.com T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T.com You'll see more of my paintings up there, more information about some workshops I do as well. But thanks for watching and hopefully catch up with you soon. Thanks for much indeed.